make me a goal not to get sidetracked here. I um, just received a message, or I just, I don't know, I don't even know how to put that into words, but basically some important questions that need to go into the questions book, questions answered. Um, the reason I haven't been chosen to do this, like, or maybe not chosen, you know, we have these words that we put out here, chosen, you know, but I'm not the chosen one, or I'm not anything like that, but the reason that I'm able to do this, or access this thing, or that I'm, I have the privilege of this information, is because, I guess, I'm going to use the word chosen for this, like, I, I guess the reason that I was chosen from the universe, or however I'm able to interpret this, or understand this, is because I have better words to put it in so that most people can understand it even kids because I'm intelligent but at the same time I have a, a bit of childishness in me is which basically is what was said or told to me like sometimes it's not really a voice it's more like the explanation is shown I mean some really intense stuff just happened within the last hour of earth time <laughs> but like so much stuff I don't, I don't even know how many lifetimes I could have just had but it was an hour it was awesome so basically the earth is some know this or have said it like the physical training ground so one of my questions was basically since I knew that I had the attention of the universe I mean for lack of a better way to put it since I knew I had its attention and could ask God, it, the universe, me, you, the, the source of all. And it basically showed me that the reason, like there is, okay, is, is I, I asked, is Earth the only place with human beings? And the answer was yes. But, like, because we have the word human beings, we, it's a word. It's all one energy in different shapes and forms and different the physical, like everything is physical. If you were to land on the, if you were to land on a star or land on a whatever, it's out there so we see it. So it's got to be physical. I mean, something of it has to be physical. At least the particles that the light is reflecting off of. Even if the non-physical sense, if, if you go in the astral, you can stand on it, but light can stand on light in the astral. You know, it's like hard to explain. We were, we're all basically masses of light standing on light in a physical sense, but, you know, scientists can explain that better than me, but in, in astral, it's like light particles can stand on light particles, not just what we see as physical masses standing on physical masses. It's like seeing the particles on particles so anyway the question was if earth was the only place where human beings or physical life is there and, and, and like of course not physical life but human beings yes and the way that we live yes um hey we think we're measured certain heights okay well i went to a place today that was like the only way i can explain it is the way we got there or the way i got there was was to show me, it's not even a planet that we even know of, it's a, it's a place that I don't know, there's billions and tr gagillions, there's no, there's no number to explain the blades of grass, right, well there's just as many, you know, universes as blades of grass, put it that way, because every, every person's idea of reality, or idea of imagination, like if you were to say, what would you consider imagination land, and really let your mind go, like, let their mind go into some crazy, amazing, awesome things, crazy, scary things, crazy, you know, dramatic things, crazy, exciting things, you know, and those things are all real in a, in a, in a some dimensional reality plane. So, and I, I know people don't want to take that into consideration because, you know, well, you're stupid. Well, no, it isn't. How is that not, how does that not make sense? Like, don't tell me that only physical things captivate people. No. Uh, yeah, there's a TV that you're looking at a screen, but the idea that's coming across the TV that's stimulating your mind is what, if you see it and you don't like it, it's not, uh, it's not entertaining to you. If you see it and you enjoy it, it's, it's what you, your mind processes it as and turns it into, okay? So, it wasn't the physical sense, it was how you interpreted it throughout the, the underlying everything, like how you 
vibrationally react to it, how you, you know, respond to it. So if you close your eyes and picture yourself doing something and you have a dream, like that is entertaining you, that is keeping you occupied, that is keeping you satisfied in a way that doesn't need to be material, which is a way that most people could do. So if you have that in your mind and you're walking around doing stuff in motion, you can love life every moment of every day because you're at a place of peace in your mind. It's your mind that is running you out. See, this is something that I said I wasn't going to tangent, but this was all stuff that all came to me. Like, there's so much, I, I can, I could talk for lifetimes because I've been through lifetimes, lifetimes and lifetimes, like lifetimes of lifetimes. Like if 70 years was a, a, an average lifetime, we'll say, and, and every day you went through 70 lifetimes, I, I'm doing that 70 times over. I don't know why I picked the number 70, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, the place, one of the places that I went to in this planet of whatever, the way that I, it was shown to me of how, how how big things can really be in a sense where you can't possibly measure it. It's like, picture an ant. And, and a full-size jumbo jet, as big as you could think of a plane, the size of an ant, okay? And walking into like a giant building, an, an Empire State Building, an ant walking into the door of the Empire State Building. Well, the way that I got there was a, a plane, and I, all I could picture was like a, a, the comparison was like a box fan, like a giant box fan with all those little squares, you know how it separates, so you can't put your hand in and cut your hand off, whatever, all those little tiny squares. Okay. And out of the maybe thousand little squares, like this little ant inside of a Empire State Building flew into one little square of the thousands of little boxes and that's where it landed and things were just so monstrously huge like what a cell would think that a human being was like, like an, uh, my arm cell knows it doesn't know that it's whatever it just is part of me so it maybe doesn't know that maybe it's conscious mine do I think I, I'm telling myself that they're part of me so hopefully they know <laughs> but like you know, say if you were the size of a, a cell molecule or a dust particle and you looked outward and saw a human being and you'd be like, that's monstrous. If you could register enough consciousness. Uh, like, you know, think of how big it is kind of thing. But if, if that's the case, who knows? Um, that's how big stuff was. So we come to Earth because it's, it's the, the physical place where it's basically the best ground <laughs> that works between physical and it's a place where mass and spirit became oh boy how can I put this in the thing I, I want to entitle it like me and me mother earth and my experience and it's like you come and you all the things that we gather from the earth that make our body that make us are all mother earth like there are all things that started as the dirt evolved into more and more and more and more and more and now we're uh, a, a big huge gathering of of thought and material like the things we either eat the stuff from the ground and that comes from the dirt or we eat the things that eat the stuff that come from the ground and that you know in a way comes from the dirt and it all comes from sun rain and, and water and you know like basically dirt so then you move from that to the next thing and, and, and when our physical being has all these ideas and stuff as it grows it just loses total touch of that and it starts projecting outward thinking that all those th things outward are, are, are the ideas that are instilled into us by everything else or what take us over but underlying everything the, it was all just the training ground of learning how to be pure learning how to go from from nothingness to somethingness back to nothingness with that experience and the more pure it is, the more your light shines. I mean, your the light. So you, you, the size of that planet I went to was still tiny in comparison of the power of this light and this love and, and the universe itself. Or, the, uh, or we're calling it universe, but it's 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 going inner universal. So it's not the universe anymore. It's that's that's a word we're giving universe, like because we think as human beings the universe is such a small monumental size. Okay, well take size out of the equation. This is infinite. I mean, of course, it's finite to me because I could do if I do this every day and I tried to go as far as I wanted to go, far, 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 for all these lifetimes of lifetimes. Like, then when I, you know, then the next day when I'm 
so then I, I wake up or come to or return or you know then the next day I actually sleep instead of meditate or, or instead of shamanic practice or instead of Kriya Yoga or instead of you know Kundalini or instead of any of the things that I do any of those things lucid dream astral project any of the things that I'm doing if, if I if I was to do that every day those are all finite because it's only the limit of time that my physical body is allowed to do that but I mean I'm experiencing so much enjoyment on a daily basis that I want to experience this not just by myself I want to show other people how to do this too and it's like I know I see other people saying this stuff on YouTube and they have a lot of followers and a lot of subscribers and that's great 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 wait you know I'm not trying to downgrade anything anyone else is doing it's just and no I don't mean it's just there's no but no whatever it's just as an additive <clears throat> I know that I have definite definite things that I know for sure will help anyone who tries it anyone there's not one single person whether they're the biggest grumpiest you know, there's all so many different kinds of personalities. Yeah, I can't even, you know, think how somebody thinks. Other people decide to me, like, what would bring them to that conclusion? What would make them think that thought? What would, how would that even happen? But people do. People are just the way they are. <clears throat> so, like, I know that no matter what, if any person of any kind of mentality could bring themselves to trying what I'm saying, consciously enough to, to at least try what I'm talking about, or listen to what I have to say, or at least spend a week with me, you know, that I could change anyone's life, I could help anybody understand stuff more, and the more I distance myself from feeling and knowing who I truly am underneath my skin and bones and flesh and these beautiful things that I'm allowed to experience through, like, it says, the more I come back to saying, thinking I'm just Dan working a job with his dad as a, as a kid, and not under, undergrading all, any of those things, because those are all beautiful things, all also in my existence but like if I when I come back to that and those things aren't going the way I want them to it almost it comes it, it comes down harder on me because it, as I would say I'm enlightened and I don't mean to sound conceited but as an enlightened being like I'm trying not to let those things like my kids and my, you know my situation not bother me but I deserve to live better we all deserve to live better and yes I'm living great because of how I feel inside. But to show for myself, which I guess I don't need, that's my problem. It's like, I don't need it and I'm fine without it, so I don't know how I'm gonna apply myself toward it to get it. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter to me. I would love to go all these places, and I will go to all these places, like the tropical islands, but I wanna do it in an organized fashion so I can have this house, live with my kids, see them grow, experience day-to-day -day family life, experience day-to-day -day spirituality, because, you know, it, it, with this, this potential that I have with this ability of, you know, like I said, lifetimes and lifetimes, like, I could have a lifetime, like, two lifetimes with, with the, uh, lifetimes worth of memories with each of my children, with each of the people I meet, with each of the people. Like, there's no, there's no limit on how many people I think that I could get to know or affect. There's not like, oh, there's too many people to, you know, there's just not enough time. Yes, there, there is. There is. There really is. And I mean, because time is nothing. There's, there's not enough. There's enough of everything. There's not anything that we will ever run out of. It's the idea that we think we're going to run out of it. And the more we keep convincing other people that things are going downhill and looking shit and life is bleak, well, that's when it's going to go that way. So the more you think that way, the more it is. So shut that off in your mind and start thinking positive. Like, why are people thinking positive thinking is so hard to do or so stupid to do? Like, the problem is that it's stupid of them to think positive thinking is not smart. That's just weird to me that why people would not want to just positive being, not positive thinking. But anyway, so long story short, very, very long story because it's a lifetime of a lifetime. And I seriously thought I just lived like 30 years in a, an hour. I don't know. So anyway, this experience here is to, we don't need to fear death because we're going from, basically we were nothingness. We were a physical nothingness, but we were of course something. We were the unseen to what we call, you know, what we would call it the unseen. We were the something that was nothing. We used however means we got here through a plant, through through particleization of, 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 of a group of soul, like uh, a herd of deer or a, 
you know, there are all individual particles, there are group group souls, there are all kinds of weird ways to explain it, and I, I don't have the right way to put it into words, but say, however we got here, we're now in, a, in an individual experience as a human being, and we are... Most people get afraid throughout life because they see all these scary movies, they see all these things, they have uh, uh, interactions that make them feel nervous or timid or unaccepted, so they hold back and they're not themselves anymore, and, and they totally become closet or there's just a piece of them that isn't that they don't express that and once they have a little piece of them they don't fully express they are under they're underachieving in their own mind not even knowing sometimes and that's that little piece of something that's holding them back so when we realize this okay we come here as the nothingness that becomes something through the particleization we become a child we eat more we learn more we eat more we learn more we eat drink learn eat drink learn eat drink learn eat drink learn of course we sleep in between all those things and at the proper uh, rate of each thing we can grow and learn at a great rate or we can learn the wrong things we can grow all out of whack we can toxify our bodies we can do all kinds of things the wrong way but through time as our life get to the end if we don't learn like the spiritual side of what's actually going on underneath everything sort of like the tv show that you enjoy or the tv show that you don't like okay when you are when you turn the tv off there's still shows going on in the, in the broadcast in the airwaves somewhere that other tvs are still picking up okay well that's all still going on without the human body and your individual soul expression does have an individual soul expression without your human body and you know that if you've ever remembered a dream and it felt real because you weren't moving or running or talking but you were moving or running and talking in a dream so that is going on when you after you die okay you're all that's all you are and if you lose if you if you don't remember your dreams you need to start trying to remember your dreams because that's the connection that you that's the the consciousness that you have when your body expires when you die basically so the consciousness you have that if it's weak and you don't have a connection with your your astral body or your secondary spirit or whatever people want to call it at least that next vehicle that that same time vehicle it's right here right now but if you don't have any connection with that you're going to have such a hard time and most people would consider that hell because it's, it's like a torment you're so scared and so confused you don't even know what's going on you know a, a lot of people can easily adapt some people can't some well i'm saying people but you know that's i'm using that as a term because they're not people then but some expressions do that some vibrational beings do that you know so then it's basically going from what we would consider, I mean, because it's not the same way everywhere, it's just here on Earth, this Earth Earth dimension. And, you know, there's an infinite amount of Earths on different dimensional planes. I know that sounds weird, but and I don't need to get into that either. So it's like, yes, it's only here on Earth, but this isn't the only Earth, this, this Earth dimension of our shared reality, I guess. You know, <laughs> does that make any sense? So you go back to the nothingness which is all of it and if you were an invisible vibrational expression you can travel all places at any time and do experience witness become you know enjoy be scared of anything at any time at any time so because there's no time with no time so, like, you, you can do all when you conquer this or learn it or master it. So, like, I feel like my mission in life is now to teach that because it's more important than entertaining some people with some music. But in order to get myself out there, I'm going to do all these different avenues of inventing things and skits and funny stuff and perverted stuff and sexual stuff and whatever because those don't, those aren't wrong. There's nothing that's wrong. And I'm not, I'm not doing anything out of hatred or harmfulness or anything. I love people. I love life. I love all plants and animals and minerals. I mean, I know it sounds so funny, but and, and it doesn't sound funny to me, but if I say it to people, I realize what I can hear from their perspective, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm thinking, like, boy, this guy's goofy. But I'm not. I'm, I'm, I wish that other people understood me to the point where I, I wish they felt like me in that way, to love things unconditionally. So, anyway, and this is, this is like, a, you know, a non-stop thing. This is not something that has changed in a long time, you know, so... Anyway, I think I've talked for a while, so I'm going to come to an end here, and it's 3.27 in the morning, so I think I'm going to actually lay down and sleep. I have a big day of recording and 
filming skits tomorrow, so I love you. Right.